Hello Arch Mama Now, how's everyone doing? Welcome to my review of Yves Saint Laurent's Cinema. This is my most requested review ever. I've been being asked about this since I first started my channel and um, I haven't just been holding off, I've just never managed to get my hands on some until now. So I've been wearing it for three days um, and of course my intrigue level was massive because of the fact that so many people have asked me to do it. So here I am, I'm reviewing it today for you. So uh, this fragrance is inspired by the beauty and glamour of old Hollywood apparently and the movie stars, that's why it's called cinema. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, it really it piqued my interest. Um, people kept reminding me about it, so I thought, okay, I need to find out what this is. And thanks to Gary Greenwood, hello, you sent me a sample of it, so thank you. Um, like I said, I've been wearing it for three days, and uh, here I am. So I'll go through the notes with you first of all. So the top notes are Clementine. Um, Cyclamen, which I keep seeing pop up in reviews, uh, reviews in perfume pyramids and things like that. The smell of it is a complete mystery. I have no idea what it is. Um, well, I know it's a flower, but I don't know what the smells like. I don't know what the the aroma of it is. I don't even know if it grows in this country. But apparently, it's a mystery flower, so I cannot comment on that. Um, then it's got almond blossom, which is quite unusual. You don't really see that in um, a lot of compositions. It's supposed to smell kind of like a herbal honey um, smell, which I think sounds lovely. The heart notes are jasmine, amaryllis, which is another one which you don't see very often. Um, it's that big, tall, green stem with one big, beautiful red flower on it, or two. Um, I don't know what that smells like either even though we had one in our office recently, and I didn't smell it. What an idiot, it's gone now. Um, but that's supposed to be um, a fruity floral smell, somewhere between nectarine and rose. Not between, it's supposed to have both kind of elements of nectarine and rose. And then the base is lovely, it's vanilla, um, white musk, benzoin and amber. Um, that's a lovely base, I think. Amber, benzoin and vanilla are very common, but white musk together, that's really, really nice. This fragrance was made by a man called Jacques Cavalier, um, who, if you don't know already, has made some amazing and very famous fragrances, including Kingdom by Alexander McQueen, hugely popular and sought after now, Midnight Poison, hello, um, Jean Paul Gaultier, the classic one, the first one that came out, um, Poem by Longcom, Ultraviolet by Paco Rabanne, and my signature, Stella. So this man doesn't mess about, he knows how to make fragrances, so I think that's amazing. I wrote another one down there, but I can't even, oh, he made L by YSL also. So he's made some really amazing fragrances for women um, in the designer kind of corner of things. And um, yeah, I, I think that's really, really cool. Came out in 2004, and it's described as an oriental floral. Um, it's supposed to be, I would say, more of like a floral vanilla, but the fragrance s proves otherwise. Let me just put this on my hand. So my take on this might not be what everyone wants to hear, but I'm gonna say it anyway. So here we go. So I had preconceived notions about this fragrance. <clears throat> I'm not sure why, I kind of thought it would be somewhere along the lines of something like Chanel, I thought it would be Chanel-esque, let's say. Kind of like a very prominent vanilla, um, some kind of florals and a little bit dusky as well. I'm kind of channeling Allure by Chanel, I thought it might be something like that. It actually isn't at all, which I'm glad about, um, but it kind of surprised me, which is always good when you smell a fragrance for the first time. So. I put a bit more on my hand because I faffed around for a minute there while I was just uh, cutting the camera off. So I've done my silly wrist test where I do weird things and I walk around with it in front of my face and this has got a very strange overall tone. The overall tone of this feels like it's kind of like a very syrupy fruity tang. Um, and in the opening, not very vanilla-ish at all. Vanilla-ish, that's not even a word, but you know what I mean. It's, I thought it was gonna be different. I thought it was gonna be softer. I thought it was gonna be a bit throwback and vintage-y, you know, judging on what it's based on and everything. But it isn't. 
This is a little bit sour smelling close up and also when it's wafted around because I've done that test like I just said. So that was really surprising to me. It's a sour syrupy fruity smell and you're going to shoot me down for this a lot of people that wear this but um, somebody at Orphograntica and I'm going to steal their opinion of it because I absolutely agree and it struck a chord with me I need to find out who it is so I can you know obviously say I used your uh, words but this smells and don't shoot me down occasionally like Britney Spears fantasy and I'm not sure why because the only note they share is jasmine and musk so I don't know where it comes from but the fruity sourness that that has as well remove all of the cupcake and stuff that's in Britney Spears fantasy but this has moments of that in it and it's that was really really shocking to me it smells like that there's differences obviously but there's a big chord that strikes through the middle that reminds me of Britney Spears fantasy and that is very very strange so I wouldn't say it's necessarily a floral smelling fragrance it's like I said it's kind of more fruity than anything else the florals in this, like I said, Amaryllis has got a nectarine rose kind of tone, so I'm guessing it's from that. And Almond Blossom has a honeyish tone, um, which is adding to this kind of syrupy sweetness that it's got. And is it kind of glamorous and vintagey? No, I don't think it is. It's more high pitched than anything else. I will say, when it dries, the vanilla starts to do its job and the base is weighty with some very beautiful things like I said. Benzoin, like I've always said, is kind of like vanilla anyway, it's just a little bit more caramelly. And amber is another sweet, kind of resinous powdery note. So the base does start to come through and then it does start to feel a little bit more like what high, what high, what, what one had expected. I, I did think it was going to be like that when it dried and it is. It's a little bit more like my overall impression when I first read the notes and read about the fragrance and everything so it does kind of get there eventually but for most of the wear length you're going to have this uh, kind of uh, like fruit juice that's just on the turn. Weird. That's what it goes like on my skin. I don't know about yours. I don't know if you've ever noticed that about it but that's what I think it is. So yeah, I've had the base dry down, and I've had the base on me a few times because I'm wearing it for three days. And yes, it softens like you would expect because of vanilla. It goes a little bit more powdery. The sourness goes away as well, um, which leaves it smelling a lot better. So that's kind of it. I get a medium wear length out of it. I would say about six hours, although some people I've read get 10 to 12. It just depends on your skin and how much you spray. Um, I will take into consideration that I've been putting it on from a vial as opposed to spritzing it on me, but yeah, that's my review of Cinema by Yves Saint Laurent. I hope that makes you guys happy because I know a lot of you have asked me about this one, so yeah, click my logo to subscribe, I'm up to 110 and I'll see you guys soon for another review. Goodbye!